The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. If you stay with what God said and you don't change your confession, that word is going to work for you because it will not return to you for. Tell it like it is. Tell it like it is. I'm just saying, tell it like it is. Because it is. Everything God's going to do, do for you, He's already done. So it is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So look what happened. They come back from spying out the land of Canaan in Numbers chapter 4, 13 and verse 30. And here is uh, two reports. And one report says this, let us go up at once and possess it. For we are what? Well able to overcome it. They're saying what God said. And then the other said, we'd be not able to go up against these people for they're stronger than we. And he came up with an evil report. What happened? Those who came with the evil report that believed that died where? In the wilderness. Those who came up with a good report and said what God said, got their what? Inheritance. I'm saying your inheritance is in Romans and chapter, chapter five and verse 12. It says your inheritance is everything. Come on, read it with me. He said Christ has been, has been given to you to what? Power, what else? Wisdom, Wisdom come on. Wisdom. Come on, what else? Now, for you to get all of that, you're going to have to call things, come on, that be not as though they were. Now, don't be concerned about whatever people think about you because they thought that about Jesus. But Bible says over in John chapter 3, verse 40, verse 34, it says that Jesus, uh, operated with no limits because he spoke the word of God. I don't care how bad it looked. I don't care what was happening. Jesus spoke the word of God. He was Lazarus graveyard dead and stinking. Jesus, Jesus came there and he said this, you know, uh, uh, when the disciples told him to go over there, that Jesus, uh, uh, master, if he sleep, then it doeth him well. Jesus said, plainly, Lazarus had died. That's John chapter 11. Lazarus, Lazarus is dead. That's what it says in the English. That is not what it, Greek says. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, he didn't say Lazarus is dead. That was a different confession. It says in the Greek, Lazarus died. There's a big difference between dead and died. He said died because he was going to raise him up. So if you don't want it, don't speak it. I said, if you don't want it, don't speak it. Loose lips sink ships. Now, where'd I get that from? In Mark chapter four, they're going over to the other side. As they're going over to the other side, uh, you know, here comes a storm. And they cried out to Jesus, you know, uh, master, don't you care that we're about to die? Jesus got up and said, peace, be soaked to the wind and said, peace, be still. And there was a great calm. And, and, uh, and, uh, next thing you know, he turned to them and said to them, uh, how is it that you're so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they said, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Jesus was a sample son, say sample son. Jesus was doing things that he wanted you and me to do. And they had enough faith to stop that storm then. Say amen to that. Amen. All right, now, I just want to really zero in on the fact that for us to get this thing accomplished in the last days, we're going to have to say what God said. Amen. Unless we say what God says, we can't do what God wants us to do. So, Somebody might argue with me on the fact that words are the most powerful thing that exists, not money. 
So they're saying, wait a minute now. I can do some things with money. Yeah, that's right. But words are the controlling factor on the earth. Because when my wife started confessing that, a plant, a business moved from Denmark in Europe to the location that she geographically spoke in her confession. So she could move a business that fit the criteria of her confession from one place on the earth, come on, help me, to another. Now you see why Satan wants to keep you from words. Take away and keep away the revelation of the power of words. Now a parrot can speak, but he don't believe it. You're the only one that can believe and speak. Now notice what happened. She wanted the job because she needed some moolah. Y'all know what moolah is? Denary. Uh, what else you call it? Yeah, whatever. Money, praise God. But notice, he didn't just grab a bag of money. He brought the source for her having the money. See, see, I know we can say money coming to us and the angel might show up that night and put something in your mailbox. I know that. I know they said tomorrow about this time is going to be plenty, it's going to be cheap. You remember that? And I mean, they got rich overnight. Say amen to that. But God can also not just give you the cash, but he can move an apartment building into your portfolio. Go into God, man. <laughs> woo -hoo! That came from God. Boy, y'all ought to receive that. He can move an apartment building. He can move the John Hancock into your portfolio, man. You know y'all ought to receive that. God gave me that by revelation. He said, you tell them this. I got something that can continue to make money for. It ain't no one-time deal. <laughs> Say amen. Over in Genesis chapter 26, starting at verse 12. Genesis 26 in the message translation. Come on, come on now. In the message translation. Come on, I, I got Kim on board right with me tonight. In the message translation. Come on, Kim, let, let them have it that right there. Isaac planted crops in that land and took in a huge harvest. God blessed him. The man got richer and richer by the day. Come on now, richer and richer. What? of your inheritance that, that God's going to make you. I'll try it again. Part of your inheritance is that God has made you. One more time. Part of your inheritance is that God has made you. When you say money come, he might send you a factory. He might send you, come on. He might send you a building. He might send you real estate. He might send you. One way or the other, he's going to make you rich. and you are rich right now. God said, ask you what you're waiting on. 
Get busy with your walking and talking. Nobody in the kingdom is supposed to be broke. I'm going to say it right now and I decree it. Nobody in the kingdom of God is going to be broke. From this day forward, I decree a thing. Everybody in the sound of my voice, this is the last week you're going through brokenness. Money coming to you. See, you got to get violent because the violent, come on, don't take it. You're going to have to take this. You don't be trying to sneak up on the devil and talk nice. Don't talk nice to him. Snatch everything he's got. Sit down. No, no. It's done. I said it's done. Part of my job is to decree it. Say amen to that. Amen. So see, people, some people think God's going to drop money out of the sky. He ain't got no money in the sky because there ain't no money up there. <laughs> money is down here. And it's in the wrong hand. And I don't know about you, but I want mine now. Sit down. Come on, Josh. <laughs> See, we got to stop playing with this thing because we're kind of fearful that other people might think we're too religious or whatever. Have you. Don't know that. Where were you? Where were they when you was broke? I know that's right. Now, I don't know who I'm talking to, but you better stop hanging around with them. Because you, if you're hanging around with them, you're talking like God, that's another thing. But if you hang around with them, either they're going to change or you're going to change. I'm telling you, folks, you got you to gotta get wild for Jesus. You got to stop trying to act so purity and so, you know, I praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give me my money. That's no praise the Lord. We're going to both praise the Lord when you give me my money. See, I don't care. See, they can, you, want to, you don't like what I'm saying? You know they can turn me off. I hope you don't. But I'm just saying, I'm not going to stop saying what I'm saying. Because loose lips sink ship. Somebody's going to have to be bold. It's too, much, it's too much weakness in the body of Christ. And we got to get all that out. Say, we have to get all of that out. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God moved that company from Denmark into 10 minutes from the house just like we had it on the card and then that company would spit out money so she could get it. And I'm telling you, if you believe this, you can be in the worst place on the planet, the most poverty stricken place and if that be the case, you can use words. You can use words and rearrange the earth. Say amen. amen. You could bring Microsofts to Haiti. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> I'm preaching now. You better get what I'm saying. Come on now. If you know the value of your words, you can do it. You are put here to rearrange this earth. 
because right now Satan's got it where he wants it. We're going to fix that. We're going to fix that. I said, you're going to fix that. Say amen to this. Oh, here is Jesus constantly speaking the words of God. And God gave him the spirit without limit. See, if you can control things in the spirit, the natural will obey you. What am I saying? I'm saying this teaching on words was something that I believe is the master key to the body of Christ in the last days. To take over this earth. Say amen. amen. And make it produce what God had planned for it to produce. Say words. words. Say from now on. From now on. Words. words are going to be what I'm going to speak. I'm going to confess the word and believe what I say is going to come to pass and I'm going to have what I say. Now the devil tried to teach you how to talk because he knew that uh, if you had, well, look at, look at this. He calls it perverse speech over in Proverbs chapter four and down at verse uh, 24. Perverse lips. These are, these are, that speech that's against God. Amen. And that, that speech will get you in trouble. Yes. Say amen to that. Amen. Job said over in Job chapter six and then verse 23 through 24. Oh, deliver me from the enemy's hand and teach me and I'll hold my tongue and show me where I've erred. And that's, that's the scripture that I needed when every time we'd go and we'd, uh, me and Keith or somebody would go in on mission trips, we'd go into places and we'd fly in there, you know, and, and we used to say this, I got to pray to get in and I got to pray to get out. And we were down in the Philippines, man, they had a rain, a monsoon come in there and we were going to land, and we were the last plane they let land. And, and I said, man, every time I got to pray to get in, and I got to pray to get out. And I started, and came up to the, they had to sit on the, on the tarmac for about four or five hours, and then they finally moved up to the terminal, and the water was still eight feet high up at the terminal. Then we went in the terminal, and because the water had flooded everything, it went and flooded all the equipment in the basement in the terminal, and the lights went out. Well, when the lights went out, they put everybody out. And they put everybody out. The problem with that, it was raining like I don't know what out there. People with babies and all that put us all out. And next thing, God said, God, what is this? He said, watch your words. I said, I'm just saying I got to pray to get in and pray to get out. He said, is that what I said? I, I thought a minute, I said, no, sir. You said I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed coming out. And ever since I've said that, we've been easy going in and easy coming out. And I think my mouth flooded the whole place. <laughs> flooded the whole place, put everybody out of the terminal. One loose lip. Thomas, you might be messing with your family. You trace things all the way back in your life and you will end up at words. You correct those words and you'll correct your life. So just don't forget that. They're going over to the other side and they cried out, we're about to die. Don't you care? Well, loose lips sink ships. Think it's speaking the wrong thing. No matter how bad it got, 
You could never get Jesus to say anything that the Father didn't say. I'm saying, I believe tonight we're rooting out a tree in your life. Do you hear what I'm saying? We're getting a tree out of your life. There's been a tree in there and it's been causing the fruit of that tree to come forth, which has been also hindering your inheritance and getting what God has for you. But now we're going to root it out. Because he said in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 13 that every plant or tree in you that the heavenly father did not plant shall be, it's got to say it's got to go. In the name of Jesus. Now I remember, remember what I told you at the same meeting, Peter was attending with Jesus and let Jesus use his boat. He got a huge catch. Am I right about that? At the same meeting. So God can deliver you and turn your situation around within 24 hours. Why? Because you're in the time of acceleration. Amos 9, 13 said things are about to happen so fast. No, I better come over here for this. Things about to happen so fast. Oh, I better come back. Things about to happen so fast in your life. It's going to make your head swim. Sit down. <laughs> See, all I got to do is say what God said. He said, my word shall not return to me, but it shall accomplish. Word's going to do the work. I said, the word's going to do the work. Yeah, I don't care how somebody's acting, especially in your family, them, them kids, just put the word on them. If they act too bad, tell them they're going to be a preacher. Watch this. And that settles it in Jesus' name. <laughs> Put the word on it. Let the word do the work. So Jesus spoke that tree and said, no man eat fruit of you after forever. And the disciples heard it. And they went up there and went to sleep. And while they were asleep, the word was at work. And they came back the next morning and Peter called and remembered said, Master, the fig tree, which you cursed, has withered away. Jesus said, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever, say I'm a whosoever, shall say to this mountain, this thing that is impossible, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt where? In his heart. But shall believe that those things that he says shall come to pass. What is he going to have? Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire. When you pray, what are you going to do? You receive it. God can move a company in your backyard. You just, you just specify on your request that you want to walk to work. No, y'all didn't get it over here. You just, you just specify on your little request what denominational bills you want. Boy, I'm going too far now. I'm going too far, right? With God, well, praise the Lord. I trust that you enjoyed that teaching. Again, that's from this teaching of faith for the impossible. It was during a faith refresher. We have it in the winter months just to refresh the saints' faith because faith needs to be fed. Faith is a servant. You've got to eat. you got to feed the Word of God. Now, this whole idea of faith for the impossible, if you don't want it, 
don't speak it. If you don't want it, don't speak it. I remember when I used to be confessing, when you're going on mission trips, you got to pray to get in and pray to get out. <laughs> and I used to say that thing, and I'm all spiritual and so forth. But what happened is every time I went in, I had to pray to get out. I had to pray. to. It was tough getting past immigration and all of that. And God said, what are you saying? I said, we got to pray to get in, pray to get out. He said, that's what I said. I said, no, sir. He said, what did, what did I say? I said, you got, you're blessed coming in and blessed going out. I said, praise God. Once I started saying that, we went past immigration, all of that with ease. No problem ever since. I was saying the wrong thing. If you don't want it, don't say it. <laughs> got that? Hey, Amen. Well, this is Bill Winston saying, get that teaching. It's powerful. We enjoy bringing it to you, and we want to let you know we love you and to keep walking by faith. If you stay with what God said and you don't change your confession, that word is going to work for you because it will not return to you void. Today's dynamic message, Faith for the Impossible, is filled with life-changing truths that can turn your circumstances around and bring you into the best life God has for you. But you've only heard a portion of the message. To get the series in its entirety on MP3 or CD, on MP4 or DVD, order today by calling 1-800-711-9327 or go online at billwinston.org. When you correct your words, you will correct your life. Get your copy of this essential teaching, Faith for the Impossible, today. Doctors Bill and Veronica Winston are dedicated to seeing lives changed through the power of prayer. Our loving and highly trained prayer ministers are ready to pray and agree with you. We know that prayer can turn around any situation in your life. We want to thank our partners who have made this prayer call center possible. Together we are transforming lives throughout the world. If you are not a partner, we encourage you to pray about joining us in partnership and be a part of the wonderful work that God is doing through this ministry. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Now remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I love you and keep walking by faith.